what if I told you that humans could have evolved on a planet other than Earth? And we're not talking about Mars here. This planet is Venus, one of the most toxic and dangerous places in our solar system. But imagine this. Once upon a time, Venus was a happening place for potential life. And maybe, just maybe, life was there. How is that possible? And what happened? Let's figure it out. Picture this, a planet swathed in clouds and named after a deity of love and beauty, Aphrodite. Sounds enchanting, right? But don't be fooled. Venus, our neighbor, is the second planet from the sun, and it's no picnic. Its surface is hot enough to melt lead, and the atmosphere is so thick that the sun is just a blurry smudge. As you get closer to it, things turn from dreamy to downright hellish. About 30 miles up in the atmosphere, temperatures range from 86 to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. And this is just the beginning. To survive on Venus, you'd need super duper insulation because temperatures can reach a sizzling 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Plus, the weight of the atmosphere would bear down on you like being submerged deep in the ocean. The atmosphere is mostly made of carbon dioxide and down at the surface, it behaves in a corrosive way due to the intense heat and pressure. The sky is sulfur yellow and the clouds are composed of sulfuric acid. The surface is filled with active volcanoes and craters. Yikes, it's like the environment itself turns against you. Venus is often referred to as the Earth's twin. That's because Venus is almost as big as Earth, just a tad smaller, and these two planets look quite similar on the inside. But in reality, Venus is more like Earth's opposite than its twin. It spins in the opposite direction, has longer days than years, and has no seasons to speak of, not even mentioning its crazy weather conditions. But believe it or not, it wasn't always this way. A long time ago, around three billion years after it was born, Venus might have been a watery wonderland like our beloved Earth. It had a cozy climate, and researchers think there was even enough time for life to emerge. But how do we know that? Back in 1978, NASA's Pioneer Venus spacecraft discovered hints that Venus might have had oceans on its surface. Since then, scientists have sent more missions to explore the planet, and they've learned some fascinating things about its past. NASA researchers have come up with five cool simulations to show what Venus was like with different amounts of water covering its surface. To create these simulations, scientists used a fancy 3D model that takes into account the gases in Venus's atmosphere billions of years ago and how they are now. They also considered how the sun's radiation has changed over time, getting warmer as it ages. And it turns out that Venus used to be a lot like Earth. All simulations suggest that Venus could have had stable temperatures, ranging from a comfy 68 degrees Fahrenheit to a toasty 122 degrees Fahrenheit. In some of the simulations, Venus had a similar landscape to what it has now, with a shallow ocean and some water trapped in the soil. In others, they imagined Venus having a deep ocean or even the entire surface covered in water. Surprisingly, in all these scenarios, Venus could have maintained temperatures suitable for liquid water. Now, Imagine a parallel universe where Venus stayed this way. What if things turned out differently and it was still as cozy as Earth? It could have been the perfect place for humans. Its oceans would have provided a nurturing environment for life to flourish and evolve. The temperatures would have been like a perpetual springtime picnic. Can you imagine lounging under a Venusian palm tree, sipping Venusian lemonade? Ah, the good life. Also, Venus had a slow rotation compared to Earth. Days would have stretched out, giving us more time to enjoy life's simple pleasures. Instead of 24 hours, a Venusian day might have lasted for months. You could have taken an extended vacation and still had time for a full makeover. And what about the higher atmospheric pressure? It may sound intimidating, but it could have actually worked in our favor. The higher pressure would have provided a cozy and snug environment, like being wrapped in a warm, fluffy blanket. No need to worry about the chilly winds of other planets. Venus would have had us covered. Oh, and remember the acidic atmosphere? It may sound strange, but it would have had its benefits too. Venus would have been a carbon dioxide loving paradise. Plant life would have thrived, creating lush landscapes and filling the air with fresh oxygen. So in this scenario, Venus could have been our haven among the stars. So what happened? What has ruined Venus? Unfortunately, everything changed about 700 million years ago. There was a huge event that caused Venus to change completely, turning it into the hostile place it is today. 
it experienced a runaway greenhouse effect, which made its atmosphere super thick and scorching hot. A runaway greenhouse effect sucked all the water into space, leaving behind a scorching surface of volcanic rock with thick, crushing atmosphere and acid clouds. Yikes. So what caused this catastrophic transformation? Well, our experts believe it may have been due to volcanic activity. When magma and molten rock reached the surface, they released a bunch of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. If the magma cooled before reaching the surface, it created a barrier that prevented the gas from being reabsorbed. Massive amounts of gas were released into the atmosphere. Something similar happened on Earth with the Siberian traps, which caused a mass extinction. Venus had its own mega transformation. So, unfortunately, this catastrophe changed the history of our solar system once and forever. But here's the fascinating part. This little mysterious planet still could teach us a lot about the origins of life. For example, if Venus was once habitable, it opens up exciting possibilities for exoplanets in the Venus zone of other star systems. Maybe they could support life too. There's also a critical question that scientists ponder. How do these life-friendly worlds come into existence? Early on, Venus and Earth were strikingly similar. They were close in size, had similar structures inside, and even had oceans in their youthful days. But one planet turned into a scorching inferno, while the other became a thriving hub for abundant life. Why is that? And finally, believe it or not, we can't completely rule out the possibility of life on Venus even now. Up high in the thick yellow clouds where the temperature, air pressure, and chemistry are friendlier, there might be a chance. That's a range where earthly life, like tough extremophile microbes, could potentially survive. The atmospheric pressure up there is similar to what we experience on Earth's surface. We've even noticed strange dark patches in its atmosphere that come and go. Dark streaks persist, defying hurricane force winds and absorbing ultraviolet radiation. Scientists are scratching their heads over these persistent streaks. They suspect they could be made of fine particles or ice crystals. But here's where it gets wild. Astrobiologists consider another option. Could these streaks be made up of Venus-style microbial life? They theorize that ring-shaped sulfur compounds in Venus's atmosphere could act as a protective coating for the microbes. Wouldn't that be amazing? That's why, by studying why Venus went down a different path in terms of habitability, we can unlock the secrets of what makes other worlds just right for life. However, there are still mysteries to solve. We need more missions to study Venus and understand its history better. For example, learn how quickly it cooled down after its formation. We also want to figure out if the transformation was a one-time cataclysm or a series of events over billions of years. Nonetheless, we can still dream of the Venus that could have been. A paradise where humans and Venusians could have lived side by side. So keep your eyes on Venus. It's a wild planet with a captivating history. Who knows what other surprises it has in store for us. Let's keep exploring and reaching for the stars. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.